Welcome to our marketing management presentation, including Ferrero Collection and Nest Cafe. My name is Beth. My name is John. My name is Andronikos. And I'm Lee. Okay. Um, as you can see, our co-branding idea is to combine Nest Cafe Gold Blend and Ferrero Collection products together. So with this, we're going to be using Ferrero Rocher flavours, Ferrero Rond Noir, and Raffaello as well with this. And that gives us a range of different nuts and different chocolate flavours to mix with the instant coffee uh, gold blend as well. For our uh, rationale, we'll be recognising the brands already, so they're already around the world, and we're going to be using that as well, following the ethical sustainability from both of the products and adding them into the market segments from there. We can open it up to students and professionals as time goes on as well, for that's our market area to target towards customers. And we're offering more than just an instant coffee as well. It's going to have really smooth blends, really rich flavours, and a really nice, luxurious feel to it, making the product really, really sustainable for us as this goes on. And it all starts with a golden moment. Before we get into our co-branding, we have to start with a macro analysis of one of our individual brands. Starting with Ferrero, we can see that in Italy, and its core national market is still in Italy, they eventually went through the EU market trying to go global. At one point, they tried to penetrate the Chinese market, which is expected a 28.9% growth rate. Their social cultural is their overrides of premium chocolate market, keeping them a prestigious brand. Moving on to Ferrero's technological advantages, uh, they have used internet and e-commerce to their advantage by using advertisements online and also used the internet to distribute their products easier. From an environmental stance, they are a very sustainable company, they are very, very PR heavy, they will make sure that their product is very recyclable and is not seen bad within the public. Any legal issues with the company is held very highly as well. There's a lot of fake products emerging with companies and they make sure that they are law-abiding with all of their rules. Ironman. We also conducted a, a, a research on uh, microenvironment and we found out that suppliers, innovation, marketing, customers and uh, competitors are the main uh, things to look in. So on suppliers, we, we found that Ferrero has a long and strong relationship with its suppliers. So they get uh, high quality raw materials. Uh, on innovation, Ferrero has a, a long term strategy on uh, to research and develop new environment. We also conducted a, a so, lot. So marketing and uh, customers, they sort of local aspect of business. And on competitors, we found that, uh, but still Ferrero considered to be a more luxury bike. We also took a SWOT analysis of Ferrero collection, and I'm going to point out the key strengths and weaknesses here. Some of the strengths Ferrero offers are, it offers a quality and luxury product among its competitors, just like Cadbury, as I mentioned before. It is a seasonal and special product, mainly attracted for Christmas times, birthdays, maybe gives them the gifts. It's also captured a huge amount of market share in box chocolates. I'm pretty sure it's near the top. Some weaknesses of Ferrero is that it's rarely advertised on TV and its advertisements aren't as regular as, say, Cadbury's, for example, or isn't as successful as Cadbury's. It is also a very highly priced product, which can also be, be seen as a luxury product, but that may turn away some consumers. It is also not easily available and isn't available in, say, your local off-license or corner shop. Okay, so we have uh, lots of opportunities on Cartier Ferrero. We can introduce uh, new flavours, we can increase the usage of internet in terms of marketing, and uh, in, as we see, there's an increase in the demand of the three-piece impulsive pack, which is uh, a pack uh, containing all the three major flavours. So everybody can have like a quick snack or a small present. The threat, though, uh, that uh, there's a lot of imitation uh, products in the market, especially from Chinese brands, and um, bad e economic cycles that may cause from inflation, financial crisis in the EU, or um, some uh, shortage on the raw materi materials, chocolate, for example. And, uh, and there's a high competition from other chocolate brands. And also there's an increasing trend in uh, nutri bars that they tend to replace chocolates. So here we've got some examples of exactly what the guys have just spoken about. We've got um, on this diagram here, it shows the expected growth of consumption of chocolate in the confectionery market. As you can see, it's obviously rocketed in the next few years. Um, people tend to buy chocolate to treat themselves mostly out of different areas. So although we might have Christmas, 
and seasonal ten, uh, tendencies to buy purchases of chocolate as well. It tends to be that people buy things for themselves on their own first. And Ferrero, the reason we've chosen them as a main point is that they have recently seen increases in sales over the last few years. So we've done uh, Ferrero, now we're going to do the macro and micro environment of Nescaf. Uh, so for macro, for political and legal reasons, um, I think one of them is con uh, contaminated nuts. Um, leg leg uh, legislations wise, the government want them to go through the whole supply chain to make sure everything's contaminated so it's not affecting consumers. Economic dec uh, recessions decrease the value of the pound. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more expensive to produce uh, these coffees, so the solution would be either to reduce the amount or add the cost onto consumers. Technology, um, with the ability of kettles and machines, it's made it, it much easier for people to make their own coffee. So instant coffee when you go to retailers would be a better example. Physical factors, climate change is a really big one, especially with the increased temperature. The coffee beans like Arabica, it's, they prefer a low temperature to a really high temperature. So the solution for this is they'll either use different coffee beans or take their production to somewhere else rather than Brazil. Social culture, market share is 52%, so they've got most majority of the market share, so this will be much, much easier for when we distribute our co-brand uh, uh, that the uh, consumers already know what the brands are. So similarly to what we've gone through with Ferrero, we've done a microenvironment analysis on the Nescafe 2. So the customers tend to be around about the age of 25 to 35 at the moment. However, what with the globalised ageing population, there will be changes happening to that as well. So people will consume coffee throughout their lifetime and that will change as, as traditions and trends do go on too. People tend to buy the products from supermarkets more than not, um, but they also buy during the weekends and later afternoon periods too, which gives us a good indication of when to put the products out onto the shelves quickly. For competitors, we've got direct and indirect competitors. Owl and Super Coffee are just some good ideas of traditional ways that coffee has been produced in Asian markets and the flavouring works with that sort of culture. As for the indirect competitors, we found that Coca-Cola and having innocent smoothies as well are very easy to grab off the shelf products to have for your lunch break or to take home to have with you for dinner and a lot of people buy them on a regular basis. So we've also done a SWOT analysis of Nescafe too. Um, the strengths we found from the brand is that it's very well recognised around the world and it is available with multiple packaging and images too. It's very positive with the lifestyle portrayed through adver advertisements all over the world as well and adverts are tailored to different locations in different parts of the, the, the globe. Health and safety issues have come apart from for weaknesses as well, which you can see through oral care and caffeine consumption. Insomnia is a cause of drinking coffee, which can be quite an issue as well. And not all of the products from Nescafe are under the name Fair Trade branding. So for the opportunities, creating new flavours, people are getting bored of the normal regular taste of coffee, and also to expand in further markets, with new technology and new flavours, you're going to be introducing new markets and more potential profitability areas. For threats, climate change is obviously a big one if you want to change, you might have to change production, especially with the increased temperature. Much like the other one as well, so following on from Ferrero, we found some sources that can obviously show you the expected sales and other things as well with the Nescafe branding. This is the expected sales of coffee consumption in the next few years. Obviously, it's got a massive increase there too. People tend to buy their coffee in large supermarkets rather than off little stores and things like that. And it tends to be that they buy instant micro ground or even just instant coffee granules to go ready for them at home. And that's between August 2016 and 2017 that we found this information. So here we have actually um, conducted some surveying ourselves and done some primary research into the Ferrero and Nescafe type of creating a co-brand here. As you can see, we've got different results of the different questions we've had, and these questions were around the area of, do you know the product, would you like to buy the product as a co-branding, and where would you like to look for this as well? We found some information here, this is just a summary of what we've got, and obviously we've got the data to back it all up here as well from a survey we did this week and the last week before. Uh, we also did a marketing audit in uh, our co-brand product, and uh, there, there are two basic courses, internal analysis and external analysis. 
and uh, there are the main the basic questions what are the strengths and weaknesses and what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses um, so what can we do to build on our strengths and uh, develop them and make sure that we offer the best product to our customers and be better than our competitors uh, on in terms of our weaknesses is how we can eliminate them and uh, all these are in the internal sphere of uh, the company like in manufacturing and marketing on the external analysis uh, thing, uh, we have the, our opportunities and threats as we mentioned before is we have to look for the opportunities and uh, how to use them to attract more customers and uh, expand our horizons in terms of uh, uh, distributing our product and also we can find we have to find out the threats and try to minimize or eliminate them well in the western culture coffee is used on a regular basis it's not an essential but it's a regular usage and so there's, it's a very diverse market but we've started to categorize it in three to shorten it down to make it a lot more easier so we've got students professionals and people who are retired except even student professionals because they have quite similar characteristic of a mass market uh, market so everyday use uh, and socializing with friends and members of the workplace where the cost of each uh, jar will be much cheaper. Uh, with positioning with our brand, we've looked at other competitors' brands and also our brands as well to establish more of an ideal place where we're going to put our brand. So we decided to do high quality and fairly fairly average price so everyone can afford it. The way we decide uh, the way we've got all this information is through retailers and. Um, customer service and customer reviews and how they perceive each product. Moving on to the marketing mix of our co-brand, we, we conducted our own primary research with a survey that actually gave us the idea of what price to distribute our product at, which was between five to nine pound. We, our target market is also students and professionals, as we mentioned. We're gonna be using penetration pricing to have access to the, the wider range of market, and we're also gonna use psychological pricing to maybe sell it for maybe 5.99 or 6.99. Our main distributor will be through retailers using intensive distribution. We decided to do the anatomy of the product theory. So the core is first. Tangible is the design, the golden design to make it look premium. Augmented is obviously the benefit, the taste of chocolate, but also the caffeine to keep people going. And for future, we're going to do a multi pack of different flavors. For our promotion, we have decided, and on a, a mass communication scale, we decided to have some print advertisement, maybe in some newspapers, uh, etc. Uh, another way would be through TV advertisements, maybe ITV1 or like X Factor Finals or something like that. Maybe they are mass, mass viewers. For our PR, we always want a very, very happy, uh, well presented. Our mass communication methods. Our advertising, maybe through newspapers, etc., like that, and um, also some TV adverts, maybe on ITV One, where they'll have many viewerships, maybe like the X Factor Final or something like that. Our PR, we'd like to have some fair trade and uh, use glass bottles that are plastic, make a sustainable company to have good media press. For social promotion, we'd like to have some people on university campuses handing out free samples, maybe some people in coffee shops handing out free samples as well, to create some brand loyalty and some return customers. For direct, uh, we want to build a relationship with our consumers rather than just a business related. So the best way to do that, I reckon, would be emails with discounts and obviously related adverts for the latest products in the future. And also related to mass as well as digital social media, you'll be able to communicate directly to the consumers of what they want. So the IMC that follows on from doing the promotion aspects, we've got a luxuriously smooth, relaxing and easy going product which gives a really good value for our customers as well. We're offering especially crafted flavour to go alongside all the Nescafe instant coffee things as well, uh, to go with improving adaption as time goes on with demand and trends. Target segment, we've mentioned before, doing students and professionals. That's what we're going to aim for mostly. Distribution methods, we're going to go through a little bit of that later on a little bit, um, but we're going to try and be more eco-friendly as we distribute further across the UK and around the world. 
retail considerations in supermarkets, we want to make sure that it's definitely on a good position on the shelving. So it might go from end of the aisle, and we might also go from middle shelf inside supermarkets too. In order to keep the consistency within the branding that we're doing at the moment around the world, we're going to use the same brand, brand images on all our products and hopefully use the rest of the, product, the slogans and logos as well. So it all starts with the golden moment being the slogan that we have created. However, if that needs to change for cultural aspects, we're happy to do that and make it work for that country. Um, alongside that, we'll obviously continue with web advertisement and keeping all of these aspects together combined in the same positioning strategy and using traditional and digital marketing to follow on with that too. So following on from the branding, we looked into the Ferrero Collection and Nescafe branding on their own. Uh, from looking into Ferrero, we could see there's quite an obvious framework that must be kept within the organisation throughout every part of that too. So for suppliers, for people who work for them, for the people who work in the farms and those that distribute as well. They must have a good portrayal of any aspect of the organisation. That's to do with advertising and how the actual organisations run to, throughout as well. Um, any celebrities and that sort of thing has to be done in a proper light and they have to look appropriate and with good social responsibilities too. Uh, now Nescafe managed to build a really strong branding strategy. So their logo and their slogans became instantly rec recognisable through the globe and they managed to be one, one of the most trusted, br trusted brands in the world. And they strategi strategically promote their brands through different regions, uh, designed and tailored for the customers. And they usually use uh, uh, celebrities to, prom to promote the products in a stylish way, including quality, delicious and tasteful words. For our communication response, as a summary of what we are going to do promotion-wise, to grab attention, we are going to advertise on multiple channels through, as mentioned before, print media and online advertisements and TV. Interest, we are going to offer different flavours and also keep the product very luxurious at an affordable price. Desire, we're going to offer returning customers some deals, maybe half price, etc. Action, we're going to place our products on multiple platforms to distribute as well as we can. So from looking at different branding theories throughout the past few slides, we found that having Ferrero and Nescafe are really, really unique ideas to co-brand together. They both offer a really classic and timeless uh, tradition with their coffee and their chocolate ideas, and it will also be recognisable in many supermarkets for many customers as well. Um, the conveying message that we're trying to go for is having a luxury brand with really smooth and relaxing flavours and textures, as well as having the tangible option of the really rich flavours within those products, the obvious recognisable product of the Nescafe with the Ferrero brand label, and the intangible aspects will be that lifestyle portrayal throughout the adverts that we're going to put through as well, giving that social branding and connection between customers and company. For the product life cycle, for the introduction and growth, we're going to be using price penetration to maintain and retain all the research and development costs and also to maintain market share. For the maturity, we want to keep maintaining that brand of lux uh, luxuriousness and for decline, we're going to be changing to multi-packs to maintain profits. So this is the analysis of our, co our co-brand. So we can see that the threat of new entrants is low because Ferrero and Nescafe are well-established uh, companies in the industry and competitors, new competitors will be difficult for them to enter the market. And also there is a high threat of substitute goods though because we can see lots of companies like Audi and Tesco try to, in, to create um, similar products in a cheaper price. Uh, high bargaining power the customers because it's price sensitivity in the coffee industry so a slight change could affect your demand. Bargaining power suppliers is very limited suppliers out there, so trying to get the best possible price with the competition will be very hard to do. So this is the final summary of our co-brand idea. We've decided again to go with the Nescafe and Ferrero collection flavours all in one as an instant coffee. That's combining the Ferrero Rocher, Ferrero Ronde Noir and the Raffaello flavours all in one different set packagings. Uh, we've also got the distribution method at the bottom here going for an indirect path using production, manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers and consumers at the end. We are taking a household name of Nescafe and a prestigious brand of Ferrero, bringing them together to make a very good product. And remember, it all starts with a golden moment.